Why is the night sky dark? You think you know the answer to this simple question, don't you? At first glance, it seems like a very easy question. Why will it be? I can hear you saying. It is dark because there is no sun. I don't think you can be too sure. There is no sun in space, but space is still dark. Of course, the reason that the sky is bright during the day is because our world has an atmosphere. White light from the sun is emitted by colliding with many particles as it travels through the Earth's atmosphere. So we will have a blue sky. If we look at the space again, then maybe we should change our question like this. Why is space dark? If you don't understand what I am talking about, don't worry, because we were looking for the answer to this question for a long time in this video. You will learn a lot of things. The question is exactly this. If the universe is infinite and contains an infinite number of stars, that is, an infinite amount of light is coming towards us from all directions, then why is space dark? And it doesn't have to be infinite. After all, our universe is flooded with billions of galaxies in all directions. So if that's the case, why isn't the sky bright? Let's go on a trip again. The sky is an endless picture that has been pushing people to think, question and admire for thousands of years. Astronomers have laid the foundations of astrophysics by looking at the sun, which warm us during the day, and wondering about the moon and the stars with its dim light and night. They called the objects in the sky names such as planets, stars. Since the discovery of electric and it is used in our daily lives, especially people living in cities have been deprived of this enormous sky painting. I am one of them. I can see very few stars in the sky at night. The reason for this is the absolute light pollution we have created. In 1994, an earthquake with a magnitude of 6.7 occurred at half past 4 am in Los Angeles. There was an incredible chaos and electric was cut off all over the city. During the power outage, a large number of people left their homes and took the streets. The first thing they noticed was that it was early dark everywhere. Normally, Los Angeles was a city with a lot of light and no sleep. It was the first time the public had faced such an all-out power outage. They experienced the real shock when they raised their heads and look at the sky. The, the number of twinkling stars wasn't so great that they were puzzled. Moreover, there was a huge silvery cloud in the air, but this cloud was not in front of the stars, but behind them. Then immediately clung to their phones and called the observatories and the emergency service. The cloud scared everyone. Do you guys know what that silver cloud was that people saw in 1994? In fact, dense clusters of stars at the center of the Milky Way galaxy hang in our sky every night. People saw the dim light of these stars far away in form of clouds. They were so used to the light pollution that they swallowed their little tongues at this side, which they saw for the first time in their lives. Here are many of facing the same station, and we should say that we have never seen the sky as the usual is. If we were in the right place on Earth under perfect conditions, at the right time of the year and in any area with zero artificial light. You could see tens of thousands of stars even with the naked eye. The silver cloud could have fascinated you too. With a small telescope it would be possible to see hundreds of thousands of stars and galaxies. Nevertheless, it is not even worth maintaining these numbers next to all the stars in the Milky Way, considering that there are close to 400 billion stars in the Milky Way. It's not even a thousands of all of them. So why I'm telling you all this? Where do I connect the topic? I mean, in the old wave of the universe, the wave that the universe was eternal and stationary prevailed. But it became clear in the last century that this is not really the case. Imagine if there were an infinite number of stars in a universe that has existed since time in Marmel. All the truths that come out of current field of view would lead us to one of these infinite number of stars. Because the universe has existed since the immemorial, and even if they are billions of light years away, the time required for the light of these stars to reach them has passed. And as it was, every point of the sky should have been sparkling. Today we know the universe has not existed since the time immemorial. Despite this, we know that there are enough stars in the entire universe, even one thousand stars in the universe for every grain of sand on earth, along with billions of stars that are heaven found only in our galaxy. So then, space should still be shining with starlight, but it doesn't shine even quite dark. But why? 
This paradox is called the Olbers paradox. This is actually a pretty serious question. So much so that astronomers have been pondering over it for centuries until they found the answer. We have loved the ancient universe. The first science thing to think about this question was the English astronomer Thomas Degas, who was born 1546, a few years after the death of Copernicus. But I'm going to take you back a little further so that you can see how our model of the universe has evolved. The Greek Ptolemy, who lived in the se second century, incorrectly claimed that the sun revolves around the earth in his work Al Majesty, one of the most important scientific books in history. His model, which puts the earth at the center of the universe, has been the main model of the astronomers all over the world for more than a thousand years. The birth of the modern way of the universe. Then came Copernicus, the father of modern astronomy, who threw out the earth centered model of Ptolemy and changed the roles of the sun and the earth. But there was a point at which Copernicus was also mistaken. He was right to displace the earth from its privileged place in his, the center of the universe. But this time he also put the sun at the center of the universe. And his drawings he placed all the stars around the sun in a fixed orbit on the outside. In a system, not only planets, but also the stars revolved around the sun. Then Diggis came out and took Copernic's system, freeing the stars from their orbit. He disrobed it to the surrounding boundless space. Thus, he was the first to seriously put forward the idea of an infinite universe with an infinite number of stars in it. Today we know that our sun is a privileged position in the universe, not in a center. In fact, there is no such place as the center of our universe. It's possible that it is going forever in all directions. We don't know that. Diggs' interpretation that each such star does not need to be at the same distance led to the following conclusions. The brighter stars were closer and the fainter ones were further away. Such an idea was literally a revolution at the time. Why is the night dark? However, from the point of view of Diggs, there was no paradox, the lights of the distant stars were just too faint to be seen. In 1610, the German astronomer Johannes Kepler presented another solution. He explained the darkness of the night by the finites of the universe. The darkness between the stars was the darkness of the other world that decked the universe. 100 years after Kepler, another astronomer, the Englishman Edmund Halley, took up the question again and came to the calculations in support of the first solution of Diggs. The universe is infinite, but because the distant stars are so dim, they are invisible. That's why it's dark at night, he said. As you can see, science things were turning around and finding the same answer. Actually, the answer makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Yes, it is, but it's not true. The first to show that this answer does not solve the question will be the Swiss astronomer Jim Philip the Cheese Alps. Cheese Alps started by making some assumptions. He estimated that, on average, the luminosities of stars are the same all over the universe. He imagined that all the stars in the universe lie forever, grouped around as in contracted liars, just like the liars of an onion. Then, thanks to geometric calculations, he proved that. Out of the stars in the inner light will be brighter, because the volume of the outer layers is larger and therefore they contain more stars in them. These two effects will balance each other out and the total brightness of each layer will be equal to each other. I mean, the fact that the distant stars were then wasn't going to change anything, more stars meant more light. At the time, there was only one explanation left. The universe could not be infinite. If that were the case, it wouldn't be dark at night. The Heinrich Olbers, who gave his name to the paradox, appeared on the stage. In an article published in 1823, he explained why the night sky was dark differently. He argued that space is filled in interstellar gas and dust, which cover the light from the distant stars. However, we know the day. However, we know today that when enough time has passed. When does? However, we know today that when enough time has passed, even those dust and gases begin to glow like the stars they warm up and cover because of the light they absorb. So this was not the solution to the paradox either. So far, 
We have seen of have astronomers approach the paradox and however knowledge of the universe has changed our time. But as you notice it, we still haven't found the answer to the question, why well, is space dark? But we are so close. 20 at the beginning of the century, when Einstein put forward his theory of general relativity, the equations showed that the universe must be contracting, because gravity should have pulled the galaxies together. But the universe wasn't shrinking. It was fixed according to the then admission. There was something wrong. Instead of making a radical change, Einstein decided to patch the equations he claimed that in order to balance it the forward pull of the gravity. There must be a force of mass repulsion that opposes it. This force, known as the cosmological constant, would balance the gravitational force and keep the universe stable by preventing galaxies from approaching each other. But there was an expected development. In 1922, a Russian universalist named Alexander Friedman came to a much different conclusion and said, Einstein may be wrong. Perhaps there is no need for a cosmological constant to keep the universe balanced. Maybe the universe is expanding. No one was ready for Friedman's theory at the time. Only if a piece of evidence was found could it be believed. It had only been a few years, and the evidence was disappeared. Edwin Hubble discovered in 1923, with the help of his powerful telescope, that the nebulae in the sky were for away to be located inside the Milky Way. In fact, all of the structures trove to be the superior nebula via galaxies in themselves. Even more interestingly, all galaxies, except for the local group, were moving away from us at the speed directly proportional to their distance from the Earth. No matter where he pointed his telescope at the sky, he observed the same event. Fredman's idea of an expecting universe has been confirmed. Hubble correctly argued that the universe should be smaller than it used to be, considering that it is currently expanding. Therefore, there used to be a time when all the galaxies in the universe were intervened and the universe was stuck. Going back even further, there should have been a moment when all these galaxies were stuck and merged into a single point. There was such a moment. That moment was the Big Bang. Today we know the Hubble is right. The space the space designing between galaxies is constantly expanding. Moreover, the pace of these expansions is increasing more and more. Apparently, where the expansions will slow down due to gravity, the expansion is accelerating because something even more powerful is pushing the galaxies away from each other. Scientists today call this thing dark energy, solving the old best paradox. We can finally give an answer to our paradox, which we have been looking for an answer to all along. Space is dark, because the universe has a history. The universe was formed by the Big Bang and is constantly expanding. The speed of light also has limits. Even the speed of light loses its experience when we think about it in terms of cosmic dimensions. Now imagine that our universe is much younger and smaller than it is today. Assume that a beam of light located at one of end of the universe is on its way to our Earth. But the universe is constantly expanding as the beam of light continues its journey. Moreover, with an increased acceleration as the universe expands, the path that light must travel is also increasing. Therefore, this beam of light will either not reach the Earth at all, or we will not be here when it reaches it. Maybe there won't have even a big world. As a result, the fact that the nights are dark, or rather the space is dark, is one of the evidence that supports that our universe is expanding and has a beginning. We learned a lot of things in this video. Now we have much simpler and convincing proof of the Big Bang. All you have to do is raise your head at the night and look the shining stars into the deep darkness of space. Don't forget to subscribe and like it. Resource ideas can be found in the destruction. Stay healthy.